I'm Khan. In this video, I'm going to show you how I turned an AI prompt into an app for users on iOS, Android, and web using Flutter and Firebase. Let me set the scene. It's 6 p.m. at the end of the workday, and I'm hungry. I left the office, walked to my car, got in, pressed the start button, and nothing. My car refuses to start. Not to mention, there's a bunch of errors. To make matters worse, it was making this click, click, click noise. Okay, that's a bad reenactment. It sounded more like... That's better. I know just enough about cars to have a hunch that it was the battery, but I wanted to be sure. Yes, I could have called a mechanic, but I'm an engineer, so where's the fun in that? I'd already been experimenting with some prompts in AI Studio for work things, so I got out my laptop and uploaded this video. You thought the sound effect was from a stock audio library, didn't you? Nope, that was the actual sound that my car was making. I asked, analyze the video and tell me what's wrong with my car. It's making the sound when I try to start it. It suggested that it might be a dead battery and recommended that I try jump starting the car or replacing the battery entirely. That seemed to back up my theory that it was a dead battery. One more question. How often do I need to replace a car battery? As it turns out, three to five years. My car, exactly five years old. So if you've ever found yourself wondering what's going on in the Google parking lot at 6.05 p.m., it's me sharing a video of my broken car with Gemini. AI Studio is great for prototyping and working out my prompts. General purpose LLM apps are great for getting quick answers to questions. However, a custom built app empowers entrepreneurs and developers to deliver unique user experiences tailored to customer needs. How can entrepreneurs and developers deliver these AI powered experiences into the hands of everyday users? My favorite answer to this question, Flutter. Flutter is Google's UI toolkit for building mobile, web, and desktop apps from a single code base. Flutter apps are compiled to native machine code, which means they're fast. Flutter also comes with libraries that get you building beautiful apps quickly. It comes with developer tools like Hot Reload, which lets you see your app changes immediately without waiting for it to recompile. Flutter is open source, so the code is there for you to dig into. And finally, you can get your app into the hands of more users on more platforms in a fraction of the time, since Flutter's singular code base can be compiled to multiple platforms. So here's how I built an app that helps users identify their car problems, inspired by my little prompting experiment. First, a high-level overview. I used the Gemini API to make calls to the Gemini 1.5 Flash model. The model was configured with a system prompt that guides the responses towards helping users to diagnose their car problems. The app is a chat UI that lets users send text messages and media like images and videos to the aforementioned Gemini API. Let's first look at building out the UI, and then we'll hop on over to building out the functionality. As you may or may not already know, in Flutter, everything is a widget. Everything from elements like buttons and text to layout properties like columns and rows are widget objects. You assemble widgets together like bricks to build a full app. I built a message bubble widget, this list view that contains the message bubbles representing the chat history, and the user input bar at the bottom. The message bubble widget is a container that displays a string of text. It has a state variable, which determines whether the message belongs to the sender. The bubble's color and alignment are determined by this variable. For a bit of flair, I added the Flutter Animate package from pub.dev, Flutter and Dart's open source package repository, to animate each chat bubble as they appear. I love how a little bit of animation in an app makes it come to life and has the ability to delight users. A list view is a widget that displays a list of widgets, so it's great for showing our chat history. The list view builder constructor is an efficient way of using a list view because it lazily renders the chat bubbles that are visible on the screen at any given moment. And we have the user input bar, which is a row containing the media upload button, a text field where the user types, and the send button. For the icon buttons, I'm personally a big fan of the font awesome icons package. It strikes a great balance between business and casual. I also have some placeholder methods for attaching media files and sending a chat message. We'll come back to that. Now, the big question is, how do you get a prompt from the Gemini app or AI Studio into my Flutter app? 
That's where Vertex AI in Firebase comes in. Vertex AI in Firebase is a client SDK that lets you call the Gemini API directly from within your Flutter app. Purely serverless, no service layer required. The Gemini API itself exposes the functionalities of the various Gemini models, like Gemini 1.5 Flash. Let me show you how to configure it. In the Firebase console, navigate to the Build with Gemini page. Once you're there, click the Get Started button to begin the process. You select your billing account to enable the pay-as-you-go plan. Pricing may vary depending on the Gemini model that you use. Take a look at the Vertex AI and Firebase documentation for the most up-to-date information on pricing. Then enable all the APIs to allow your apps to access Vertex AI in Firebase. Finally, jump over to the terminal and add your Flutter app to the Firebase project. Firebase configuration is done. Now we can look at the code. I initialized the Firebase app in the main function, then I declared a generative model in my app state. I'll specify the string identifier for the Gemini model that I want to use, which in this case is Gemini 1.5 Flash. I also defined a rough system instruction based on my experimental prompt to guide the model's responses. This system instruction is the magic sauce that turns a general purpose LLM interaction into a personal mechanic friend that is available at all times in the palm of my hand. Plus, I don't have to worry about interrupting their dinner with my car problems on a random Tuesday night. This prompt is short for demo purposes. However, as you collect more feedback and edge cases, you can add more context to the prompt and make the interactions even more sophisticated. This prompt can be added in the model constructor with the system instruction property. I created a new state variable to store my Gemini chat session. The nice thing about having the chat session is that it automatically manages and sends the full chat context to the Gemini API without any extra work from my end. Finally, within my app's init state method, I started the chat session. What about sending a request to the Gemini API? That took exactly one line of code, calling the send message method on the chat session. When the response comes back, I access the text property. That's all it takes to send a prompt and receive responses from the Gemini API in a Flutter app with Vertex AI in Firebase. Next, let's look at managing the app state. I created a message content class to store message data and a small class for file attachment data as well. There's also a list of message content objects that stores the message history and populates the chat bubbles. The message content gets passed to the list view so that it can render a bubble for each message. You might be asking, Khan, our chat session already keeps track of the chat conversation with the Gemini API. Why keep a separate message content list? It's for separation of concerns and future extensibility. That chat session specifically manages the app's interaction with the Gemini API and nothing else. The message content list specifically stores the state that should be reflected in my app UI. Whether I add more features to the chat that aren't Gemini interactions, or if there's a Gemini API surface change, I don't have to worry about one change affecting the other. Back in the send chat method, I created a new message content with the user's text and added it to the message state list. I parse Gemini's response, construct a message content object, and add that to the message history list. This is the most bare bones way of interacting with the Gemini API. The user sends a message to the Gemini API, the API responds, and the app shows the back and forth conversation as a list of message bubbles. I want to add a more bespoke message bubble structure when the Gemini API returns a diagnosis for my car questions. It would make the app a little more dynamic and engaging. Gemini's responses first needed to be structured in such a way that the app can process it. For example, JSON format. So I specifically asked for JSON object responses. You can see the system instruction is getting to be a bit more detailed, since I was now asking for differing structured data depending on the contents of the response. Since we're now asking the Gemini API for JSON responses, we'll also configure the response MIME type in the model constructor. This meant that I need to process each Gemini response and decode the JSON. The message content stayed the same for plain text responses. However, I needed a new data structure to represent diagnosis messages. I defined the diagnosis message class, which inherits from my message content class, and contains a list of diagnoses. You'll see that the diagnosis message constructor gets past a list of potential problems, which it iterates through and inflates into the list of diagnoses. 
a diagnosis is straightforward. It's a problem and a solution. Once again, in the send chat method, I decode the JSON response and check the response type. If it's a diagnosis, I parse out the list of problems, construct a new diagnostic message, and store it in the chat history. If it's a plain text follow-up response, construct a new message content and store it in the chat history as before. To surface the new diagnostic messages, I created a new diagnostic bubble widget containing a scrollable page view of diagnostic cards. Each diagnostic card widget displays the problem and its solution. When the list view is rendering chat messages, it conditionally returns a diagnostic bubble or regular message bubble widget based on the message type. Finally, the last piece was making sure that users can attach and preview media files. I again used more packages from Pub, Image Picker and Video Player. I added a new state variable to store the current attachment when the user has one selected. Within the getMedia method, which serves as the on-pressed callback for the attachment button, Image Handler handles all of the platform-related work, like showing the native photo library on mobile or a standard file picker on web browsers. All I do is store the selected file in my new attachment state variable. Then I show the images and videos using the image widget and video player plugin, respectively. When the user hits send on their message, the file is added to the message content and the Gemini API request. Once everything's said and done, I can now run the app on Android, iOS, and the web. This experience reminded me of when I was taking entrepreneurship classes in college. So many of our projects centered on product validation, quickly testing your ideas to see if there's real world demand. We cobble together landing pages and run ads to see how many people were interested. But now I can build the entire app and have it in users' hands in the same amount of time that it would have taken me to build a landing page and validate the idea. I also had another idea while I was working on this app. I'd open Google Maps to find the closest auto parts store where I could buy a replacement battery. What if I build an agent integrated with the Google Maps API so that it can suggest the closest auto parts shop or mechanic along with the diagnostic messages? Flutter has a Google Maps plugin that you could use to create a map bubble widget, though I'll leave that as an exercise for the reader. My point is, Flutter is flexible and adaptable to whatever you throw at it, whether that be a direct LLM interaction with Vertex AI and Firebase, or more complex agentic experiences built with Google Cloud's Vertex AI Agent Builder or Firebase GenKit. By the way, the mobile and web apps that you see on screen right now, they share a code base. It's the same Flutter app, just adapting to different devices and screen sizes. Flutter plays well with existing client-side tech stacks too. If you already have a native Android, iOS, or web app that you'd just like to add a Flutter component to, like an AI chat app, you can do that as well. What drew me to coding was the ability to broadly share solutions for complex problems. In this new era of AI, I'm really excited to see how we can build AI solutions and make them accessible for everyone with Flutter. And if you're wondering what happened with my car, my awesome friend Will taught me how to replace my car battery. It's as good as new. Well, at least for the next three to five years. Thanks for taking the time to tune into this video. If you're building an awesome AI powered Flutter app, please let me know in the comments. I'd love to check it out. And for more resources on building your next AI app with Flutter, be sure to check out flutter.dev slash AI.